Well, desperate times call for desperate measures now. After years of persistent falls in consumer prices, Japan's central bank has implemented a highly unusual method to stimulate inflation and get the economy going again. As Osukri has this report. Like a cough that just won't go away, Japan has been struggling with a steady fall in consumer prices for years. Economists call this deflation. It can be bad for the economy because it encourages people and businesses to keep putting off decisions to spend money, hoping that prices will fall further. It also has the effect of pushing up the cost of borrowing and reducing the value of savings. The Bank of Japan has been trying to reverse this trend. It's cut interest rates to below zero and has been spending the equivalent of nearly $780 billion a year on buying Japanese government bonds. That is about the size of the entire economy of the Netherlands. But it's had little effect. Now the Bank of Japan is trying something unusual. It says it will try to keep the yield on 10-year government bonds at around 0%, roughly where it is now. And it wants to keep yields of shorter-dated bonds below that level. The bank's governor, Haruhiko Kuroda, wants to push the inflation rate to above 2%, up from minus 0.5% in July. And manipulating the so-called yield curve is his latest weapon of choice. The new framework which centers around yield curve control will be more flexible to prices and financial conditions compared to the original methods of controlling the growth of the monetary base and outstanding government bonds. The BOJ hopes that its actions will push up the yields of 20- and 30-year bonds and keep shorter-term yields low. This would give commercial banks bigger profit margins and so more of an incentive to lend money, which the BOJ hopes should stimulate demand in the real economy. But the jury is still out as to who the main beneficiaries will be, ordinary people or the big banks. As Sukri, TRT World. Well, what do ordinary Japanese people make of this latest move? Here's an expert in Japan's economy and finances, Seijiro Takeshita. Well, actually, uh, I think they're trying to stay with the status quo, uh, but certainly what they've rectified is the biggest problem, which is, in my opinion, our inclination towards indirect financing, which is, well, uh, financing through the banks. And uh, the current policy have basically um, squeezed the Japanese banks to a point that they were screaming uh, for Bank of Japan to do something. And what they did was they rectified this problem about this reversal of uh, long-term and short-term rates, uh, meaning that uh, it's now been normalized. Uh, so this is a very, very big move, and it gives a lot of breathing room. You can see that in Japan today, uh, the banking shares and financial shares have soared on back of this. So it's basically to rectify the negativity or the problems that they caused through introduction of uh, this negative interest rate previously. Not only the banks, but uh, insurance houses as well, who's been suffering uh, from this negative interest rate. So again, it goes back to the fact that you can't kill the patient by trying to remedy it. And that's what the Bank of Japan was doing. People are putting far too much focus on Bank of Japan's moves. I mean, financial policy is fine. But right now, I think the ball is definitely in the court of the Japanese government, who has to come up with a lot of fiscal measures and structural transitional measures because, well, you know, Mr. Kuroda uh, has also connotated today, a Bank of Japan connotated today, that the problems are very structural and long term. And to come up with a short term solution isn't really the answer. Uh, we really need long term structural changes. For example, issues of labor, issues of demographics, all these things that takes a long time. And basically, the government really has to start pushing very hard to make those transitional changes because that is where our biggest problem lies.